Great win, uh, great crowd uh, once again here in uh, Simon Scott Assembly Hall, which again it's an 8:30 tip. We're just so grateful that um, you know our fans continue to show up and support us. Uh, they were they were they were big tonight. Uh, you know, other than the fourth quarter, um, you know, some of our um, shooting, uh, you know, was we struggled there a little bit with just hit, hitting uh, you know point that point blank uh, layups. But uh, other than that, I thought it was a solid night uh, for this group. I thought uh, Chloe did an outstanding job on Leah Brown. Um, again, she just continues to be such a high-level uh, elite defender for us, and um, you know, really proud of uh, the job that uh, you know she did. Uh, you know, Mac uh, obviously got settled in there offensively, uh, even though she would tell you that she struggled there in the fourth. But um, well, those were um, misses that uh, are uncommon for Mac, and so there's no no doubt in our mind or my mind that she'll bounce back in a big way on Sunday. Um, you know, for um, for Senior Day, and um, you know, Michigan is obviously a very good team. It's a it's a team that um, you know we respect. Kim does a great job. Uh, but uh, you know tonight, give it, give our our guys credit for how they guarded. I thought they did a tremendous job. Um, kept their turnovers low. Um, we did get out rebounded. I realized that, but uh, you know I thought we battled. Um, and like I said, other than the fourth quarter with our scoring, um, yeah, we were able to keep them at bay, which was really important. You know you don't you don't shoot it well the last the fourth quarter, but yet you still win the game by 16 points. So. Um, you know, great win for us, and um, you know we, we have a quick turnaround as you guys know with the noon game um, against Purdue here on Sunday. So um, you know we will uh, resume tomorrow uh, and uh, Saturday, and then get ready for a good Purdue team. We'll go question first. Do Matthews first. Lou, go ahead. For both uh, both guys, uh, the you've beaten nine ranked teams this year. Um, nobody else in the country has done anything like that. Can you reflect on that a little bit? And are you having fun? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I hope it looks like we're having fun out there because I definitely am. Um, you know, obviously rankings are important in some aspects, but we go into every game with the same mindset, with the same game plan, um, because we know in the Big Ten, even if a team isn't ranked, that. Uh, they can still be dangerous and come in and um, we know we're going to get every team in the Big Ten's best. So um, we just try to we try to take every game, you know, just as serious because we know how dangerous teams in the Big Ten are. Seth. Chloe, uh, Mackenzie's obviously having a very good season. What, for, from your perspective, has allowed her to kind of take her game to another level this season? Um, I would say she's been great, you know, handling traps, handling uh, double teams coming at her, you know. She's kind of got a good balance, which makes her great. You know, she can obviously score the ball, but she can dish it out too and recognize, you know, where help is coming and when it's coming. Kevin. Chloe, throughout the entire season, take a Coach Morton has said how you've just improved overall, especially defensively. But I kind of wanted to ask you, from your perspective, where have you seen your game grow and just kind of what has been able for your defensive game to just improve throughout the whole year? Um, I think my growth has came from a mental standpoint. It's being confident in myself, you know, since I've gotten here, my teammates, the coaching staff, they believe in me, and it, I think it's about time that I just believe in myself. Doing a story on you tomorrow, Chloe. So Mackenzie, I'll ask you this: Is Chloe more of a vocal leader, a silent leader? Just how does she lead your offense in her increased minutes this season? Uh, you know, I think Chloe is the type of person. Um, she's she's not one of the people that are constantly talking, but when she has something to say, everyone listens because we know it's gonna be something important. Uh, I think she, last year, she really started to lead. Um, just from, you know, when we need to pick things up, she'll let us know and everyone um, respects her and, and knows that when Chloe's saying something, we gotta listen and, and follow suit. Uh, Chloe, just you all year you've been asked to defend the other team's best perimeter player. Just what's your mindset with that? How do you mentally prepare to do that night after night? Um, just night after night, I just tell myself I can do this and just take pride in my own one-on-one -on -one defense. Mackenzie, what right now? What is what's the emphasis of practice? And the reason I ask that is because normally in a, in a season, the ups and downs of the season kind of dictate the emphasis of practices. Between the lines, it's been up. So what, what, what has been the emphasis of practice? How do you guys maintain your up through practice? 
I think it's just, uh, you know, every drill that we do, there's a purpose for it. And taking those drills seriously and repping them every day, whether it's working on ball screen defense, the team's opposing actions, working on passing out of double team, extra, extra passing, playing fast, whatever it is that we're asked to do, we know we have to take it seriously. Uh, but as far as practice goes, I think the emphasis is just staying focused and staying locked in for the whole time uh, so we can get better and we can get ready for the next game. Charles, question for Beth Rodeo. Yeah, question for both of you. Um, last time you two played, you know, it was 90 something to 80 something, pretty high scoring game. This time, you know, the two top defenses in the Big Ten, it was a 50 something to 60 something game. What do you think were the biggest differences between this game in terms of the game plan and execution? Yeah, um, I think, you know, uh, last game was a little bit, you know, faster paced. We had a lot of shots that didn't fall in that fourth quarter. I think we would have definitely scored more points if I had a couple layups that fell, I think some others as well. So uh, we knew we had to lock in on defense and I thought we did a lot better job of that, um, guarding their actions, guarding one-on-one, -on -one, getting stops, getting rebounds. So I think it was just the flow of the game was a little bit different. Mac, five blocks tonight, you moved into second all-time in program's history. Uh, how have you seen your defensive abilities grow through your time at Indiana, both as a shot blocker and just impactfully? Yeah, I, I think that something that I've really tried to get better at is my defense. Um, it's always, you know, it's not something that comes super natural for me, but if I can be a rim protector for the team and, and help the team in that aspect, then that's something that I really want to try to do. All right, thanks, ladies. Thanks. Harry, it's clear what makes this team different from past teams in terms of on the court, you know, the outside shooting and the defensive toughness that you've mentioned, but maybe more intangibly, you know, I guess intangibly in terms of leadership and what we don't see, what we don't see. What makes this team different than the past? I mean, because you have veterans in the past, mm -hmm. you know, veteran teams. What makes this veteran team different from those teams? It's a great question. Um, again, I've, I've talked about it, just the maturity level. Um, you know, when you have a leader like, you know, Grace Berger, who uh, really sets the tone for us. I mean, she does. And um, there's a seriousness about Grace that I think resonates in practice, um, in that locker room. Um, I also think, think that there's a fondness that they all have for her. And um, I think that they want to see her, uh, you know, um, and, and trust me when I tell you, we have a lot of basketball ahead of us, but I, I think they want to see her um, <coughs> finish, you know, this is the right way. Uh, well, Terry, you heard my question for Mackenzie. I mean, from your perspective, yeah. I mean, you know how it is. I mean, most in, in a regular season, you know, you, you'll have a, like a couple games where maybe your right. defense is off and you have to emphasize right. that. Between the lines, there hasn't been anything obvious that hasn't been anything other than up. So how do you yeah. handle that? I mean, how, how does the team maintain their their excellence through, through their practice uh, habits? Well, I think at this point uh, in the season time, you know, we really tried to shave off some some minutes, and I've had a to do a deep dive into some things that I'm willing to do do less, or maybe it's just change up the duration that we do our drills. Um, you know, maybe maybe take a minute or two, shave, and uh, you know those minutes off of um, you know everything we do. But Matt hit it on the head. I you know we try to be very intentional about walking in there and making sure that one. Uh, we're prepared um, and that we're preparing them um, and uh, you know one of the things that that I am um, I like order I like um, uh, I like detail uh, and so we're very specific going into practice exactly what what our intentions are but what our goals are uh, you know for that particular practice and it's whether it's working on something offensively that we feel like will work against a team like Michigan and then certainly on the other side of that, you know, we're always uh, game planning and making sure that our kids are prepared um, defensively. But, um, you know, at this point, we, we've cut back um, as hard as that is for me sometimes. 
at this point in the season, I know one one thing to be true, um, and if, as we're here, you want them to, to have fresh legs and fresh minds. Um, and so that's really been my, my goal for, for this group. Now, you know, tomorrow's will be a little bit different. Um, you know, I don't like the fact that we play at noon um, after such a late game, but, um, you know, we've, we've uh, continued to be um, challenged in a lot of ways, especially going down the stretch here. Um, and so I know that, uh, you know, tomorrow will be a little bit different in terms of uh, what we'll actually get out on the floor and do, uh, but we'll have a great film session uh, with the group. And, uh, you know, one of the things that um, I trust is that uh, they're, they're going to want, want to know how to beat Purdue. Um, and, um, you know, we'll make sure that um, whether it's in film or whether it's just walk through tomorrow, uh, but, um, you know, to answer your question, that's really what we've done. We just shaved time off and trying to be more intentional. Wilson, to your left. Uh, Barry, Chloe was just talking about her improved confidence. Just how have you seen that manifest yeah. over however long it's been? Well, it's, it's, it's been so great to see. And, you know, all of us believe in Chloe, uh, our staff, her teammates. I think one of the things that, you know, ha has happened to Chloe is um, you know, she's such a great story and I've continued to, to talk just about her patience and waiting for her moment, waiting for her time uh, to be a starter and, and play significant minutes. Um, and along the way, she's continued just to kind of keep her head down and do the work, but also she spent a uh, really good time in the, lot, in the weight room, you know, and I think that that is done. You know, if you look at pictures from Chloe now to what she looked like as a freshman, her little screen being self coming in here, uh, you know, she's morphed into a, an athletic, uh, sturdy, strong, uh, you know, playmaker, yeah, but elite defender for us. Yep. Coach, congratulations on the win. Thanks. And that first quarter, you guys jumped out to an 18-9 lead, I think it was, right. uh, forcing Michigan to call a timeout. You came out of that timeout, we got a rare look at a full court press out of you guys. Is that something that you intended to throw in, or? It was just junk. <laughs> it really was. You know, we're not a pressing team. Uh, anybody that's watched us, but, uh, you know, Coach Box is, is always, you know, trying to be clever over there, I think, you know, just to keep keep other teams guessing. You know, I did catch us in the second half. We, we uh, kind of got behind Brown, and she threw it over the top to Williams, and she, we fouled her, but uh, that wasn't the intent. Um, but, uh, yeah, that was, um, you know, just uh, something that he was – he was looking at. Kim. Kim was in here earlier and she said her son plays D3 college basketball and he actually wants to take a look at your film because he loves your offense so much. <laughs> so I just wanted to know what your response to that was knowing that other collegiate athletes want to get their hands right. on the Indiana basketball. Well, that's very flattering. Um, and, you know, we'll, you know, this is a group that has continued and you guys have watched them. I mean, we're, we're down the stretch here, 26 games into this thing and you've watched how, um, you know, just how unselfish this group has been, uh, how much they enjoy sharing the ball, how much they love watching each other have success. Um, you know, they understand the, the, you know, our, our, our uh, game goals are always to keep the, the, the turnovers low uh, and our assist high. And, um, and I think there's great balance on this team. So uh, that's flattering. Give, uh, you know, give our kids credit because, uh, you know, they're certainly the ones that make it look uh, for the most part, uh, pretty on most nights. I've got a question on Zoom. Emma Vogel, ESPN, go ahead. Yeah, um, Thanks, Emma. I wanted to ask just about, you know, the streak against ranked teams that you guys have. I don't think anybody's beaten more ranked teams uh, without a loss than you guys. And, and I know, you know, you, you do take it very, very much a one game at a time approach, but to be able to play this many ranked teams with this success, can you, can you talk about what that means? Well, again, I just think, you know, you have to give credit to our players and their focus. Um, you know, I do think it motivates them also. Um, and not that the unranked opponents don't. Uh, but um, you know, I think, M.A., you and I have talked about this. You know, from the beginning, this group has had lofty goals. And, um, you know, we understand that in order to achieve the goal, the goals that we want, we got to win a lot of games. I always say we got to win all of them, but we got to win a lot of games in order to position ourselves uh, to win championships. And um, 
And so I think it's just our kids' determination. I think it's their motivation, but I also think that they're laser focused on their goals and, that they have. And um, and I, like I said, I, just, I don't think they want to let Grace Burger down. Um, and so I think that there's, um, you know, a special incentive, uh, you know, for, for us to play these games with the same kind of moxie, determination, um, seriousness, um, love that Grace Burger plays with. Thank you. Hey coach, um, you had a, a pretty veteran team coming in with Grace and McKenzie, but you know, you had some transfers that are really strong players that were kind of veterans came in. Mm -hmm. um, what's it like to see those girls accept them you know, with their role and come in and, and, and play a big part of this? Well, I'm, I'm never surprised uh, when, um, you know, new, new um, young women decide to come in here and be a part of our family because um, we, we only, uh, well, at least we try really hard um, to recruit the best kind of kids. And, um, and a lot of them, most of them, all of them, you know, have a, have a great set of parents as well. Um, and, um, you know, that's, that's sort of been, you know, um, how this thing has morphed into what it's become because we, um, we have great human beings in our program and, um, I'm never surprised by how they, they welcome, you know, their, their new teammates and or recruits and or parents of recruits, just how they, they handle themselves, um, because they're just really good kids. You know, there's just no other way to, you know, explain it. You guys have been around them, you know, these two, but, um, you know, they're all, all those 13 kids in that locker room, you know, are from good parents and they're, they're good people. Question in the back row to you right um, I'm sorry to ask a more somber question, but, you know, there was that moment of silence before the game um, in honor of MSU and the tragedy that happened there. And I was just wondering if you had any thoughts you wanted to share. I mean, it's obviously very sad, you know, uh, I reached out to, uh, to Susie, uh, just to uh, you know, let her know that obviously we were thinking of her uh, and her staff, her players, and certainly the university. I mean, it's you know, um, just senseless, and um, I can only imagine. And she's you know, um, the calls that she has to you know take from parents of her players, you know, wondering if their kids are okay, and so um, you know, just like. Michigan, all of us, you know, we're, we're one big, even though we're, we're, we're competitive, but at the end of the day, we're all a family here in the Big Ten. And, um, you know, we're, our prayers and our hearts go out to that entire university. And, uh, you know, the only thing we can do right now is just make sure we're trying to wrap our arms around each other here a little bit tighter, uh, you know, as we move forward. It's kind of hard to go back to basketball after after talking about that, but, <laughs> but I mean, we'll try. Yeah, um, you know, I mean, big picture now. You have a chance to clinch a share of the Big Ten title at home on Sunday against right. Purdue. It's just, you know, the, the program's first ever sellout. What right. does it mean to just? What does that moment, that opportunity mean? Right. To well, the sellout's really cool. You know, I, you know, I'm, we've gotten close, but uh, we've been about four thousand shy, right? Of of getting this place completely packed. So, um, you know, I, I'm as eager to see this as, uh, as our players are, I know. Um, you know, I talk about the quick turnaround, but one of, one of the things that I do know is that Hoosier Nation uh, will show up in a big kind of way uh, for, for us. But, um, you know, it's, it's always special. Senior night is a, is a special day for, you know, especially Grace Berger and Alyssa Geary will be a part of that as well. Um, and it's, it's always bittersweet, you know? So, um, but here's what I do know about Grace Berger. You know, there's no softness in Grace Berger. And so she will, uh, if there's any moment that she'll have, it'll be, you know, after the game, uh, you know, um, but I don't even know if we'll see that because she knows that uh, we gotta, we gotta turn around and go to Iowa the next week. Um, but um, yeah, I think we're excited uh, to, to, to see, um, you know, Hoosier Nation show up for a women's game. Uh, here in Simon Scott Assembly Hall, uh, what we believe is the, the best venue in college athletics uh, to support us. All right, thanks, Yep, thank you, guys.